What's up everybody, Boletsky here, and today I'm just sharing a few ideas I had. I'm really curious about the community's thoughts on this, so comment what you think below. The other 2021 update videos are still on their way, don't worry. As always, if you hit all the relevant YouTube buttons, that comes highly appreciated. I'm just a simple guy, and I like seeing numbers go up. So first we have accessible information and shorthand. I had a moment during a game a few weeks ago where I was about to activate a model that needed to pass a simple duel for movement, and I currently had just one card in the deck. Although I didn't do this, I remember thinking whether I could ask my opponent to allow me to look at my last card, considering I could narrow down exactly what it was by knowing my entire discard pile and the few cards in my hand, and looking at the card would save me the time of eliminating options and figuring out which one it was. For context, the rulebook says that you can look through your discard pile at any time as long as it doesn't slow down the game, which is strange since the rules say you can't look at the opponent's discard pile, and vague since we don't know exactly what constitutes slowing down the game. Is the spirit of the rule to prevent intentional slowdown that creates an advantage, for instance if a player doesn't want the game to last until turn 5? Or does it apply to any slowdown as the rules are written? For instance, would looking at the discard pile in the example I just mentioned be an illegal move? I certainly have a purpose for doing so, as figuring out the last card in my deck and if it will pass that simple duel is important for deciding my next move, but there's also no denying that looking at the whole discard pile, assuming I'm not permitted to do the shortcut, will slow down the game by definition. But also, extrapolating that logic would mean neither player could ever look at their discard pile, since doing so would, again, slow the game by definition, if only just a little. But I digress, I'm just going to assume that the only thing we wish to prevent is intentional, unfair slowdown, where someone is trying to get an advantage and have the game go to time rather than to completion. I play a different card game at my local gaming shop, and I won't spoil what it is, but subscribe because a video on it will absolutely be made and it's really really good, where players often make it to the end of their decks and can check both their and their opponent's discard piles at any time to see what threats remain in play. At least in my group, it's typically within etiquette to allow your opponent to pick up their deck and see what options they have left as long as they shuffle it afterwards just to save on time, despite this not being an official rule. So this is question number one. Would it be acceptable for you if your opponent asked to check their deck contacts at almost any time, granted they shuffle afterwards? Next, a new idea I have about flips and adding stats. So, the other thing I thought of is changing the way we currently add stats when deciding the result of an opposed duel. Right now, we flip a card and add our stat to it, which is often 4, 5, or 6, but sometimes more or less. What I hate about this method is that small amount of fatigue that comes with constantly doing these small math problems several hundred times a game, particularly if you're playing multiple games in a day or late in the evening. Maybe you know what I'm talking about, that screw up you do after you've been making 90 calculations per minute to extrapolate how your opponent will respond 3 activations from now and all of them are wrong. You finally flip a 7 with a 6 stat and total up 7 plus 6 equals 14 like a 6 year old might, and god forbid you have a hand of 6 cards, have to tally the total number for each and compare it to the opponent's dual total, all while thinking of other crew members and what they want to be doing later in the turn and if those cards are going to be needed for those too. Now, obviously I'm making a mountain out of a molehill here, and I'm not going to pretend like I'm not, so this isn't that important. But regardless, I think I have a better way. This could just be the easiest way that makes sense to me personally, so I want to know what you guys think. I propose that instead, during opposed duels, first you compare the stats and apply only the difference to the player with the higher stat. For example, if I attack at stat 6 against defense 5, instead of adding 5 and 6 to each of our duel totals, I would just add plus 1 to my dual total, and my opponent would add nothing. Similarly, if the stats are equal, both players would just use the values on the flipped cards with no need to add stats at all. In my opinion, this would speed up the game slightly if you save a few seconds on every duel, but more importantly free up that extra bit of brain power to focus on the gameplay rather than miscellaneous math. It also gives you a clearer view of how good or bad a dual total is, especially for beginners. Veteran Malifaux players will already abstractly realize how powerful a 20 dual total is, but wouldn't it be better to see a 14 dual total and instantly recognize that only the red joker will match it because the regular cards run from 1 to 13? Wouldn't it be better to have the mental muscle memory that given an equal or higher stat on defense, a 9 dual total is immune to straight damage flips, or an 8 if there's no red joker in play? Instead of having to add and subtract stats from both dual totals to determine what dual total is safe when cheating first? This wouldn't affect simple duels, so we would still do them in the same way we do them now, but for opposed duels, I think this is a highly preferred method. 
It'll take a bit to get used to, and I think it's unlikely to ever get adopted among the whole community, but tell me what you think, and I'm excited to hear your guys' thoughts. And lastly, we have target numbers on the stat cards. This is probably only possible for the M3E app rather than editing the cards since they're already printed, but I would also prefer if on the back of every stat card in the game there was a 50% transparency digit behind the text of every action, something like this and it represents what card you need to hit the target number without any modifiers. So a stat 6 TN12 tactical action would have a 6 like this, just behind the text rather than in front of it, but I can't do that in the mock-up. This would again make it easier to memorize what unmodified flip you need for many of the actions in your crew, or just be able to tell at a glance since you probably know which actions are pasted on the card in which areas, like at the top or at the bottom. If there's no target number, we can leave it blank, and if there's a variable target number, like for a summoning action, we can just use an asterisk, and you'll have to just figure it out on your own. So yeah, those are the three questions. Would you allow your opponent to look at their deck? Would you prefer to add the difference in stats rather than the stat totals? And would you like it if the card value you needed to succeed was printed on the back of the cards? Let me know, and I'll see you guys next time.